What's going on everybody, Josh here with Scrapyard Films and they just released Vegas Pro 19 so I'm going to show you the best vocoder render settings to get you the best looking video for a lot of different codecs, a lot of different coding modes, and a lot of different file extensions. Of course we're not going to cover all of them, but I'm going to show you the most common ones and how to set it up yourself. First thing you want to do is go to Vocoder's website, which is vocoder.org. From here, go to the Downloads menu, and here you'll see the app and the connector. You'll want to download the app itself and the connector for the version of Vegas you're using. So we're going to choose 18 plus. They may even change that to Vegas Pro 19 in the future. But download both of these and install them. Once installed, restart Vegas, and then you're good to go. So let's go ahead and go to the top left and click on File. Go down to Render As. Here you're going to see a lot of formats on the left hand side which are kind of you know specific for whatever certain type of project you're working on. But if we scroll down to the V's we're going to see Vocoder listed as a format. Over here on the right we have our templates and I have some made already so ignore those. You're just going to see these top four most likely. Select the top one then go down to customize template. From here we're going to click show Vocoder dialog. And this is going to open Vocoder's actual settings. Over here on the left hand side we have different options like video, audio, output, things like that. And on the top here we have tabs. So under video, if we go to codec and drop this down, we'll see a bunch of different types of codecs we could record in. The most common ones used are H.264 and HEVC and ProRes. Those are the three most common ones. H.264 is the absolute most common one because it's the most compatible with video editors, video players, things like that. If you have a proper graphics card installed, you'll see two different versions. X264 means that it's going to be using your processor only to render this video. If you have an NVIDIA option up here or an AMD option up here, that means it's going to be using your graphics card to assist your processor in rendering this video. Same thing for HEVC. The X265 means processor only, and then your encoder up here, mine says NVIDIA, will be using your graphics card to help. ProRes, you definitely want to choose the recommended one unless specifically you need the AW version for some reason. But ProRes is for those high-end DSLR and people making those really nice short films and movies. But the average person watching this video is going to probably be uploading to YouTube. So we're going to go ahead and choose H.264 and I'm going to do the graphics card assisted one. So select that and then we're going to see a preset, only one of them, hit apply. And then we can now see what this preset has to offer under the options tab. Hardware it tells you what graphics card you have in your computer. Down under basic we have bit depth, you can choose and drop this menu down, and you have a few options. 420 means chroma subsampling, 444, same thing, chroma subsampling, that essentially means color sharpness, and then right beside it 8-bit and 10-bit means color bit depth. So if you're not specifically choosing to record in 10-bit or a higher chroma subsampling, the most common one people are going to be using is 4208 bit So we're going to select that one. Under here in yellow, we have standard options that we can change around. Preset, if we drop this down. Slow and medium are for pretty good graphics cards. Same thing with Blu-ray and lossless. If you have a decent graphics card though, maybe like a RTX 20 series, then you could choose fast or high quality or even medium if you wanted as well. But for me, since I have a 3080, I will choose slow, but try it out and see how it renders for you. This will affect the speed of your rendering. So the higher quality one you choose, the longer it'll take to render. So I'm gonna choose slow. Profile, if we drop this down, we have baseline, main, high, or high 444 chroma subsampling. You really won't see a difference if you choose any of these, but I have found out through trial and error that main is better for videos you intend to be watched on a cell phone, high is better for videos that are intended to be watched on a computer or on YouTube. So I always choose high. Strategy, if we drop this one down, we have constant quantizer, constant bitrate, and variable bitrate. Variable bitrate lets you choose a maximum bitrate and an average bitrate that you want your video render to hit. It allows fluctuation of bitrate to avoid pixelation. Constant bitrate lets you choose a specific bitrate and your final video will pretty much be exactly that what you chose. But for rendering outputs, the best one I've found is constant quantizer. This doesn't let you choose a bitrate, but it actually lets you choose a scale from one to 52, I believe, so the lower the number, so like 1 through 15, are the higher quality, higher bit rate, and higher file size videos. If you go down to the, the higher you go in numbers, the lower the file size, the lower the quality, and the lower the bit rate. 
I found the really good sweet spot for video games is 17. That's a great number. It's going to provide you low file size, extremely good quality, and you're not going to see any pixelation, and it's going to be a really awesome looking video. If you want something a little bit higher quality, you can bump this up to maybe 14 or 15, but anything higher, you're not going to see a quality increase with your human eyes, but your file size will go higher than you really would want it to. So 15 through 17 is a good number, so I'm just going to choose 17. Now all these blue options down here are very specific and proprietary and we don't want to change any of them unless you know exactly what you're trying to change. Choosing and messing around with some of these can totally mess up your video and make it not look anything like you want. Next let's go to side data tab and check this out. We don't want to mess with any of these again unless you have to. They're really specific and proprietary. Then we go to filters. Same thing, you can add filters if you wanted to your video for rendering, maybe like a film filter or something like that. You know, again, you don't need to do any of that. So we're done with the video tab. Now let's go down to audio. If we select our codec, we can see that it has a bunch of different types of codecs as well here. The most common one used is AAC. So we're gonna keep that one by default. We're gonna go over to the options and we're gonna select our bitrate and profile. So for bitrate, if we drop it down, we have a bunch of preset stuff. Now I've had it on 320 kilobits before, but I found that if I put it to 512, I get much better audio results than 320. I know it's a minute difference, but that's personally what I do to get the best audio sound. Profile, we keep it at low complexity. Or if you wanted to change it around to see how it sounded, you can, but I haven't heard anything different by choosing any of these settings, so I'm gonna keep it at low complexity. Filters, again, we could add some if we wanted, but we don't need to. Output, muxers and formats. When you drop this down, you'll see a list of options. In this one, we have AVI, MKV, MP4, and MOV. The most commonly used and accepted one is MP4. The next most commonly used and accepted one is AVI. After that, we have .mov, which is also pretty commonly accepted, but if you have an .mov file, the computer or player has to have QuickTime installed to even read it. So I recommend using MP4 first, and if you don't want to use MP4, I recommend using AVI. I would never recommend using MKV because that is a very unreliable container that a lot of things don't know how to read. So stick with MP4 and you're good to go. Enabling fast start means it's gonna write the metadata at the beginning of the file so a lot of things can understand what it's reading pretty much immediately, but it makes really no difference whether you have it on or off. So I just leave it unchecked by default. Settings lets you choose the language and let you log any information if you wanted. About shows everything about Vocoder and who created it and any patrons they may have. Once you're done choosing your settings, click OK, then immediately go up to the template and rename it. Once you renamed it, click this floppy disk and hit save. Now all of the settings you just changed are set in stone. Hit OK and you're gonna see it right down here. You can select this star beside it to favorite it for easy finding. Down at the bottom we see folder and we can click browse and this lets us choose where we wanna save our file to. Once you've chosen the folder you wanna save it to, rename it again and then hit save. Now once you're done, go ahead and hit render. And that's going to go ahead and wrap it up for this video. If it helped you out, be sure to shoot a like and subscribe down there because that'll really help me out. I'll see you guys in the next video. And I want to give a special shout out to all my legendary scrappers at the top, LMC and Hardy Cash. You can find links to their channels and social media in the description below. And thanks to all my super scrappers there in the middle and my awesome scrappers at the bottom. 